Let us pray. Our gracious God and Father, we do thank you for this special day in which we as Americans celebrate the freedoms that we have. And in that, we also come before you asking you to do a great work in us as your church in this nation, that we might grow to be more influential and be the people of God that you have called your church to be here in the United States of America. That you would use us to bring about change and also that we might indeed spread the gospel more to those in our very midst who need to hear it each and every day so that they can come to faith through Jesus Christ, your only Son. And so we ask you to work in us physically, mentally, and spiritually, that we will draw closer to you and know you better. Teach us in your word, even as you taught the disciples long ago, when you taught them to pray these words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading comes from the prophet Habakkuk, chapter 1, verses 8 through 11. Their horses are faster than leopards and quicker than wolves in the evening. Their horsemen charge along. Their horsemen come from afar. They fly like an eagle, swooping down to devour. All of them come for violence. Their horde of faces moves forward. They gather captives like sand. They make fun of kings and dignitaries are the object of laughter to them. They laugh at every fortress. They heap up dirt and capture it. And then they fly along like the wind and pass on. But they will be held guilty. They whose strength is their God. Our New Testament reading comes from the book of Revelation, chapter 15, verses 2 through 4. And I saw something like a sea of glass mixed with fire, and those who were victorious over the beast and his image and the number of his name standing on the sea of glass, holding harps of God. And they sang the song of Moses, the bondservant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are your works, Lord God, the Almighty. Righteous and true are your ways, King of the nations. Who will not fear you, Lord? and glorify your name. For you alone are holy, for all the nations will come and worship before you, for your righteous acts have been revealed. Let us pray. We ask you, God, to speak to us through your word this day. It is in your name we pray. Amen. Today is Sunday, July the 4th. It is the celebration of the birth of our nation and also our freedoms as people who live in the United States of America. So I'm going to approach the teaching a little differently. I normally just break open scripture and uh, we talk about that and we expand that so that we can apply it to our hearts. But I'm going to teach today on two of our founding fathers, which I think we can do the same thing with as we look at scripture and as we filter the scripture through. We talked about in our readings today how that God is the king of all nations. And we also talked about how that other men in their own self-righteousness and in their own strength think they are God and despise authority. And so that sets the stage for where the American Revolution came in at. So these two men are quite different, but yet agreed on one thing. Uh, the first man is Thomas Paine. Thomas Paine was a patriot, an author, and um, he was also a deist. Okay, and we have no doubt of that. It's just the way it is. We don't need to argue it. It's blatantly obvious. Uh, he wrote a, two books. The first book he wrote was called Common Sense. It was used by George Washington 
to read to his troops to inspire them to fight the Revolutionary War. And it was a great book. It's still in print today. You can buy it. It's out there. Uh, in fact, it's being used today by some radicals, unfortunately, uh, for other purposes than it probably was originally intended. Thomas Paine is one of those guys you never hear much about until you go to college or seminary or whatever because of his enlightenment values that he brought into the mix. And he was not alone. He had friends like Benjamin Franklin, Thomas Jefferson, George Washington, John Adams, all of these people who were at least one point in their lives deists, and most of which were that all their lives. Uh, many of the signers of the Declaration of Independence were deists and Enlightenment thinkers. We know this for a fact because we also understand how it all came together, and we understand how Thomas Paine died. He wrote a book before he died called The Age of Reason, which expanded the Enlightenment movement, and it expanded the whole uh, deist thought into our nation, which it had already come in quite a bit. The original pilgrims came in the early 1600s trying to form a Christian nation, but over the years that got diluted and polluted by others coming in who brought their non-Christian philosophies in. And one of those was the Enlightenment movement from the European continent.